Hi, and welcome to my podcast, Jack to the Future. From science and inventions to pollution and recycling, I talk about what's changing in the world, the future, and how we can help with that. Every month I'll talk about a different future theme. For example, the future of science, tech, sustainability, reading, music and all sorts of other ones. The future of everything. Did you know? You can find me on Facebook and Instagram as Jade to the Future and on YouTube as Jack to the Future. Follow me to get behind the scenes info, access to the previews about my next episodes and much, much more. I'd like to welcome you to my special Future of Birthday celebration episode cause... Yep, you've guessed it. Jack to the Future is one year old today. Happy birthday, Jack to the Future. Love, after Alice. My friends at After Alice online toy and gift shop there who join me in the Future of Play episode. Thanks little Alice for the violin rendition too. As well as being my podcast anniversary today, I have some very exciting news to share with you. On Wednesday, I won the BBC Rising Talent 8 to 11 year old category within the Young Audio Awards and I'm over the moon. Can't even believe it. Woohoo! I'm on episode 23 of my podcast now. It all started during lockdown last year and I've interviewed over 28 adults and children since then. I've learnt so much, met some lovely people. I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for listening and supporting me. It's amazing. I'm joined in this episode by some of my fans, friends and many of the people I've interviewed during my podcast journey so far about what they think the future of birthdays or celebrations may be. I wonder what my friend Jonathan over at Dorktail Storytime podcast thinks. Hey, I just want to wish you, Jack, a very happy pod birthday. Now, uh, as for your question about uh, what birthdays and celebrations will look like in the future, well, I... I think that I need to to take my time machine, yes, my DeLorean, and travel to the future to see what will happen. But I, I believe that birthdays and celebrations will become more important than ever before and bring us all together. Come on, Marty! We gotta go! We gotta go with Jack to the future! Let's do it! Oh wait, hang on, hang on. Not quite ready for the future yet. First, it's Jack to the past time. The tradition of celebrating birthdays is thought to have existed since the ancient Egyptian times. Despite the clues in the name, you know, birthday, day of birth, this isn't what the Egyptians actually celebrated. They were actually celebrating the birth of someone as a god. What does that mean? Well. When pharaohs were crowned, it was believed that they had become a god. For Egyptians, this day was more important than the day they were physically born from their mums. So what about cakes and blowing out candles? Well, we have the ancient Greeks to thank for that. Have you heard of the Greek god Artemis? She was a lunar goddess, like moon. The Greeks would offer her moon-shaped cakes with lit candles. This was to symbolise the moon and the candles symbolised sending her prayers. The Romans were among the first people to celebrate birthdays and having parties. But do you know something that was really unfair? They only celebrated male birthdays. Female birthdays weren't celebrated until the 12th century, 1100 and something years later. Crazy, right? It took a long time to get birthdays looking like they do now for children. The icing top birthday cake was a German invention and birthday parties for children were celebrated from the late 18th century. These parties were called Kinderfest. Each child would be given a cake with a candle on the top for each year of their lives so far and with one extra for hope. Talking of the past, I spoke to Professor Simon Horobin at the University of Oxford a few months back in the episode The Future of English. It was so interesting and we talked a lot about the history of words and where they came from, so it seemed appropriate for Simon to fill us in on birthdays. Hi Jack, it's Simon Horobin here from Oxford calling to say Blither your birthday in Old English or Bappy Hearthday according to Reverend Spooner. Congratulations on the first year of your podcast and good luck with the future. Happy Earth Day. <laughs> I love that. Nowadays, how people celebrate depends on a person's culture, religion and where they live in the world. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about how they celebrate birthdays in different countries. Here to help me, I have a fellow podcaster. 
Hi there, my name is Timothy and I'm the host of the Brother Timothy Clark podcast. Did you know that if you were in Spain, they would celebrate your birthday by ear pulling? In China, we would see something called longevity noodles. And in good old Canada, they would do a nose greasing for your birthday. If you were in Australia, they would make fairy bread. And, well, if you're in Jamaica, you might get flowered. Uh, you usually leave your birthday celebration covered in flour. So maybe it's a good thing you're not in Jamaica or maybe you'd like to be floured. If you're in Mexico, you might like smashing a piñata. Yeah, I think that's one of those celebrations that I would like to. I believe that these traditions will, for the most part, remain the same. COVID-19 may have stopped us for a while, but I don't think that it has dampened our celebrational spirit of how different cultures around the world do what they do. And if you would like to hear a bit more about the Brother Timothy Clark podcast, feel free to go ahead to my website for more information, timothyclarkmusic.wordpress.com. And now, back to Jack. Thanks, Timothy. Great facts. I did not know any of those, except piñata, which I agree is so much fun. Whatever you decide to do, whenever you decide to do it, birthdays are always a special time. But moving forward into the future, I wonder what birthdays might be like. Hmm, what do you think? I think in the future, for the birthdays, technology will be a huge part of the celebrations more than it is today. We will have the internet of senses, like smelling, touching, hearing, and all the other ones, but we'll feel them virtually. For example, in the future we may have a cake, but have it virtually and have the taste and the crunch sound and things in your mouth. Virtual cake eating doesn't sound very fun, but that might happen. Hopefully it will make it more fun. I mean, eating a cake is already loads of fun for your tummy. <laughs> And then maybe for all of the activities that they could do, party games developed with technology, they could be more based on some sort of futuristic devices. For example, you might want to do like invisible tag. So you could make noises, but you could also be invisible at the same time. Then people won't actually be able to see each other. Games like that. Party games, but with technology. Birthday cards kind of wasting paper. So they'll definitely just post them on the internet. The metaverse which is coming up. It's time to hear from my guests now about their thoughts on the future of birthdays and celebrations. Some of you may be aware that my number one inspiration to start my podcast was from my friend Bernie, who let me be on his radio show during lockdown. So what better way to start this episode than by hearing what he thinks the future of birthdays and celebrations might be like? Well, hello, Jack. Bernie here. Thank you so much for inviting me to contribute. First of all, I want to congratulate you on the success of your podcast. It's been absolutely brilliant and how fantastic and how well deserved that you've been nominated for a national award that's so brilliant and now to the matter in hand well do you know what i don't know i think a lot depends on trends really perhaps predict that way in my family we used to have a lot of family birthdays and that would trigger lovely family gatherings and get togethers which i've really treasured and enjoyed but sadly because of the pandemic these suddenly stopped and a sad and poor replacement to these birthdays has been people sending standard happy birthday greetings on whatsapp that have kind of pre-made and so what i think is really important is to make the birthday personal and to think of something really special for the birthday person that hits the spot and what i recommend rather than these standard messages is to make your own birthday card make it personal the same for the gift it's so important to put a lot of thought it's the thought that counts not the money that you spend i think that is so important for the future i would like people to do that a thought that we don't really do now is the birthday person could perhaps do something for themselves i've been thinking of more and more as i work with the elderly is i think it's really nice to have your own little scrapbook or logbook where you put mementos and memories and put photos and i think you could do this every birthday and review how you've done over the year and think of the highlights of the year and to put them in your little logbook now this could be on paper it could be actually on the computer and as well the person can think of little aims that they want to achieve by their birthday by next year if possible or wishes later you can look back on it 
and it can be passed down to your children and grandchildren to look at and it could be a really nice learning point so birthdays for the future let's make it more personal more meaningful and more special well done jack and very very best wishes thanks bernie some great ideas as usual i love your suggestion of things that we could do at home particularly the scrapbook one in fact we're planning on doing this for my sister rather than guests bringing gifts we've asked them to bring a drawing or a picture of themselves or maybe something from nature that they found and we're going to stick it all in a big book that she can keep it forever and remember all the people around her that helped her to celebrate here to talk to us next we have my podcast pals new Uji Paloozy from Delhi and India. Hello, hello. This is Leela Shivshanka Prickett from Newsy Paloozy, the news pod for kids. And I'm the big story explainer and sound effects finder, Lindy Prickett. Who also just happens to be my mama. Total coincidence. <laughs> Total coincidence. <laughs> and as a couple of news nerds who love to know what's happening all over the world. And travel to see the world. <laughs> we think birthday celebrations of the future will be a hybrid or a mix. Between actual get in the dirt and play birthday parties and zoom around the world virtually for greeting friends and family we've gotten used to seeing on video screens only that bit will get better whether it's a roblox birthday where you get to see birthday cakes from around the world or a joint virtual reality adventure as international news journalists (laughs) you and your friends from around the world will have a meta experience (laughs) but since nothing beats the bounce of a bouncy castle and the taste of real cake there'll be a real party too back at base because well real life kind of (laughs) rocks happy Happy birthday birthday, jack Jack. the The newsy paloozy team team will see you in the future in the future 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 (laughs) (laughs) thank you so much for that message it was so cool yep I definitely agree with what you're saying. So there'll be virtual parts of the birthday party, but also there'll be actual parts of the birthday party in real life. Introducing my friend Beth, who is nine. I think for the future of birthdays, there will be cakes that slice themselves and candles that blow out themselves when they're told to so that people don't spread jars. Also, the parties would be bigger and better. Happy birthday, Jack, to the future. I think that virtual candle blowing is a really good idea, especially since you don't bread germs like you say. Hopefully that actually gets invented. Thank you so much for your message, Beth. Next, I introduce James, who is from Hertfordshire Mind Network, which is a mental health charity. Hi, Jack. This is James. I'm one of Jess and Joe's colleagues from Hertfordshire Mind Network. We were on your podcast before about the future of mental health. Thanks again so much for having us. I know Joe and Jess really enjoy coming on and chatting to you. And for your listeners, I'd definitely say go back and listen to that episode if you haven't already. You can find more info on that episode on our website, heartsmindnetworkcyp.org. In terms of my predictions for the future of birthdays and celebrations, I think firstly, I think there'll be more use of Zoom and Teams and Skype on birthdays for people to get in touch and wish happy birthday. I think there'll be more live streaming as well so at an event. You could have people at the event and you could also put a webcam there and stream it for friends who can't make the event. And lastly, I think particularly children's birthdays are going to be more eco friendly. So when I was younger and there was party bags, that these would be typically in plastic, but now I think there'd be much more eco friendly party bags and then maybe have more environmental treats in them as well, like wooden toys and seeds congratulations on your one year anniversary thanks james i really enjoyed talking to jess and joe as well i think your idea about party bags is spot on in fact it's my actual birthday in a couple of weeks and i'll be nine we are looking for things to go in party bags that are eco-friendly and can last for a long time and don't have to go in the bin so i think that's a really good point that you made now i've got a guest who's talking all the way from australia I did a joint episode with her for the New Kids Listen mashups podcast, which only came out on Sunday. Do check it out, please. Go to kidslisten.org to find out more. Hi, Jack. This is your friend Amy Chan from Kids Pod. I just wanted to wish you and your podcast a very happy one-year birthday. What an amazing achievement for Jack to the future. When I think about what birthdays might be like in the future, I actually have to think back to the past. You might not know this, But when I'm not podcasting, I'm a children's book author 
And the very first book that I ever wrote was called My Grandma is 100. It's a book about someone who is very special to me. Her name was Grandma Edna and she turned 100 years old. This was only a few years ago. And at that time, I thought that was so amazing and so unique and so special. So it's been really interesting since the book has come out, how many people have come up to me and said, my grandma or my grandpa or my great uncle or my great auntie has turned 100. It's becoming more and more common these days. And I think pretty soon it won't be unusual for people to live to 100 years old. So then I wonder what is it going to be that is the next special number in the future? Will it be 200? Will people live until they are 200 years old, do you think? Wow, that's a really different way of thinking, Amy. I think it probably will happen in the future because in the past, people haven't lived as long. So the further back you go, the less amount of time that person lives. So maybe into the future, the age rates of the oldest person might get bigger. Who knows? Hi Jack, it's Dave from Hartford Library. Just wanted to wish you congratulations and happy birthday with one year of your podcast, Jack to the Future. Love listening to it, brilliant idea, absolutely inspirational. In the future, I think parties will be virtual and you'll have all your friends and family around you in a room on a screen, but I think you could also invite famous people and people you admire and you could download them and they'll be at your party too. Thanks so much, Dave. How cool would it be if you could actually have a celebrity or birthday party? That would be amazing. I think I'd probably have Rude Goldberg at my birthday party because I love his chain reactions and get him to like do some for me and that would be really cool. Next up is Peter from Hearth of String Theatre Company. I went to see a show that he acted in in 2021 and there was loads of puppets in it and it was called Under the Frozen Moon. Hi, it's Peter from Half a String, also known as Kim Johansson the Fox. Happy birthday to Jack to the future. We have really enjoyed your content, especially over Christmas this year. Everything you did under the frozen moon was absolutely fantastic. Um, I would imagine future Jack to the Future birthdays are going to be massive with international superstars wishing you a happy birthday as well. But you've got me for now and it's a pleasure. So good luck, best of luck with what you're doing. Happy birthday. I, one day I hope I'm famous enough to share my birthday with celebrities. That would be amazing. Thanks for your good wishes. Remember my future entrepreneur episode? Well, I spoke to Israel from Animal Fusion Stories and he's writing his own book. Amazing, right? Here he is. I think in the future of this celebration, those who don't like cake, there will be more alternative options like chicken wings and the cards and birthday presents will stay the same. I think that's a really good idea about alternatives to cake. I like chicken wings, but I think I probably prefer cake to be honest. And now for my friend, Cherry Pie Makes. This is one of my favourite Jack to the Future episodes, The Future of Art. A very happy birthday to Jack to the Future. I think that future birthday celebrations probably look a lot like interactive celebrations. You know, I would like to see people maybe creating their own birthday cake or DJing at their own party. I definitely want to see lots of human interaction in the future. My predictions are that birthday parties will become smaller and more intimate, but much more interactive and there will always look beautiful. A very happy birthday to you, Jack. I hope you have a good one. Ah, Emma, I like it. Less technology, but more doing things. I love decorations too. I think that'd be a great idea. Hi, Rebecca from Hartford Theatre here, wishing Jack a very happy anniversary on his podcast. Excellent work, keep it up. So my predictions for future birthday celebrations could include a hologram or digital presence of a favourite celebrity or pop star singing you happy birthday or being part of your birthday party. I think that would be really popular with party guests. I also think that VR will become more popular for birthday celebrations. So you could have a space theme party on the moon in your virtual reality. But I do think it's important that imagination is able to take us to these places as well. And there's nothing wrong with a real life moonscape being created 
in a village hall or in your garden with everyone dressed up as aliens too so you don't need virtual reality but I think that might be something that becomes more popular as it gets more accessible in the future. I also think that birthday cakes might evolve and they might get bigger and better and the candles might become digital and hopefully people will make more sustainable choices in their birthday presents and go down the route of buying experiences or giving their time instead of another toy or another little trinket for people. My last prediction, not really a prediction because I think it's going to be something that's going to be really popular in the next couple of years, is having a birthday party at the new cinema and theatre building in Hartford. So that's really exciting. Happy anniversary, happy birthday, bye! Thanks Rebecca, some really cool ideas there. I can't wait to check out the Hartford Theatre getting rebuilt. I really love the idea of the future of a VR birthday. The theme I would choose it would be a land made of Minecraft. Hello Jack, it's Philip Wright, your number one Jack to the Future podcast fan from Austria, Deutschlandsburg in Austria. And congratulations on your first year anniversary of Jack to the Future. A fantastic milestone. So, what's the future of birthdays and celebrations? Well, isn't it great when you can celebrate these occasions with family, friends and others? It sort of punctuates and highlights these celebrations, not only during the year, but for a whole lifetime. I personally love these celebrations as it brings people together and binds families closer together too. But remember, the greatest joy is to give, not to receive, especially when you give with a smile on your lips and eyes and with giving with the heart. Have you ever considered having a themed party, perhaps as ladies and lords, or Stone Age men and women? Yes, well, fancy dress parties when I was your age, we had so much fun doing this, so there's great scope for this and celebrations into the future for everyone it's amazing what different themes you can come up with and makes them interesting and really brings in the people to the party and makes their enjoyment fantastic too congratulations have a fantastic celebration thanks for your podcasts they are brilliant i'm looking forward to the next one bye jack thanks philip you're right birthdays are not just about receiving all these lovely messages that people are sending me has made me smile, and they've made me smile more than a toy I've ever had. Hi, Jack, from We Are The Voice Children's Environmental Choir. We'd like to wish you a very, very happy birthday for your successful podcast and hope that you have many more. As we're celebrating birthdays, the thing that I'd like to see, and in fact our choir would like to see, is the abolishment of plastic wrapping on all gifts and toys and presents, and we'd also like to do away with wrapping paper as printing all that paper is very bad for the environment. And while I'm at it, I'd like to do away with balloons as well because they burst and they end up polluting the seas and killing animals. So without sounding too bad humbug, I'm sure there are lots of wonderful creative ways that we can give gifts to each other without harming the environment. So that's all from us. Well done. Thanks, Neve. Yeah, I definitely agree with you that they should have alternatives for different things to wrap toys in. Like, plastic bags aren't good for the environment, so maybe they should have some some other things. Maybe some sorts of different new materials which are better than the environment, like I talked about in my Future of Fast Food and Future of Waste episode. This is my friend Layla, who is eight years old. I think celebrations and birthdays of the future will be technology-based. Presents could be printed by 3D printers that people have at home. People won't attend to parties at a location. They will all celebrate in their own homes by joining a Zoom call. Robots will deliver the food, party bags and cake to each person, no matter where they are. Party games could be played by people reaching into their TV, like for Pass the Parcel. Each person would reach into their TV to pass to the next person. Happy birthday, Jack, to the future. 
I really like your idea about passing the parcel virtually and robots are living in your presence. It's a little bit like a magic trick. My favourite magic YouTuber called Zach King, where he takes a bowl out, a bowl of crisps, and they pass it next to each other in the Zoom call. I was involved with a video that was filmed for the National Trust last year and I got to interview Miranda Campbell, who is a climate advisor. I wonder what her predictions are. Hi Jack, happy first birthday for your fantastic podcast. I hope you have a good time celebrating. I've been asked what the future of celebrations might look like and one of the things I really hope they're not going to include in future are balloons, especially helium balloons. Helium's a really rare resource and we need to use it in healthcare rather than in our balloons. So I spend quite a bit of time and lots of other people do at National Trust picking up old balloons that are floated up into the sky and then drop down again. So that's the only place they go and they're a real hazard to wildlife. Sea creatures think that they are jellyfish and other animals get tangled up, ribbons that tend to come with them. One of the things that you can do instead of balloons is use something like bunting and also bubbles. Thanks for the message, Miranda. I like how you use prop in your video to make your point. Mum will put the video on social media. Your suggestion about balloons is the same as Neve from We Are The Voice. And I didn't realise that helium was so special. So I think that that's important that we find other ways to decorate. My friend Cherry Pie makes some really good ideas about how to do this. Here's Jono from Unite Radio. So it's Jono Godley here with my little message for Jack around the future of celebrations. So I'd say that birthdays and celebrations will look a little different in the future. I think there will be some of the current elements, such as meeting up with people and celebrating in that way, that will always be there. I think people have learned to value the social connections more, you know, post-pandemic. I'd say that in terms of the digital side of things, Thanks to video softwares like Zoom and Microsoft Teams and even FaceTime, stuff like that will really come into play as well. So, for instance, if there's someone that isn't able to make it to a celebration, you know, more often these days I'm seeing these kinds of Zoom parties and celebrate that way. But as good as Zoom and other applications are, you'll never, ever be able to beat the human aspect coming together celebrating something super exciting it's the best it will always be the best so i just wanted to wish jack a very happy first anniversary for the show uh, you're doing an amazing job and i cannot wait to hear some of the future podcasts you have got coming up smashed it well done yes i agree as great as technology is being with real people to celebrate is better my friend Kelly helps people to paint their emotions and I've done a few sessions with her which I've absolutely loved and it's a great way of expressing yourself. I just know she has some great ideas. Happy first birthday Jack to the Future. What an incredible first year you have had and what an inspiring young man you are. It's been a pleasure to get to know you this year through painting. Yeah, you've asked me what I think the future of celebrations and birthday parties are. Um, I know because I'm doing it. I'm being invited to people's celebratory events to either paint live there myself. I capture the energy and the vibration that sort of magic that happens when people come together in celebration of someone or something. And the other thing that I've been doing is getting the guests, all the party people, to paint in a collaborative painting like this one that I recently did at an adult birthday party, but this could be for all ages. And well, I didn't do it. I guided them to work together and create this painting. And I'm now finishing it off so that it can be presented to the host as a gift of love from all their friends. Happy birthday. I think it's a really good idea that they should have an artist at a birthday party. It's a good idea because it's so unique and you get a lovely gift at the end of a painting with loads of good memories. Thanks, Kelly. It's been great to paint with you. One of my first ever episodes was with Ranger Stu about the future of animals, so I'm really pleased to welcome him back for this episode. Hi Jack, Ranger Stu here, and I just wanted to wish you a happy first birthday to the Jack to the Future podcast. Now, as you know, I love birthdays. I'm always doing birthday parties, but I hope birthday parties don't change too much in the future. Hopefully we all have our friends and family there, as usual. Hopefully we still have in-person parties. And of course, there is always cake. 
but maybe in the future the technology catches up a little bit and we might have holograms of our friends and family that maybe live too far away say you have a family member that lives in another country can't be there for your birthday you know zap in a hologram there they are next to you as you blow out your candles who knows thank you for having me on and see you soon I definitely agree with you. I really hope Kate stays too. Introducing my latest podcast guest, Aidan McCann, the magician. Hey guys, I'm here with my dog Trixie. And birthdays in the future, I think they'll be relatively the same as they are now. Because 50 years ago, you still get your birthday cake and you'd still get your presents and you'd meet with some of your family and friends. So I think that will all stay the same. But I think maybe some of your presents will be different. 50 years ago, obviously, you wouldn't get a phone or something for your birthday. So I think obviously in the future, there'll be new gadgets and stuff you'd get. And maybe what you do in your birthday, because laser tag wasn't a thing 50 years ago. And I went to laser tag for my birthday this year. I'd love to give a great shout out to Jack to the Future with his one year anniversary with his podcast. Thanks Aiden and Trixie. <laughs> Gadgets are always changing all the time so I definitely agree with your point of how they've changed over years and will probably continue developing into the future. And lastly and by no means least is a child podcaster like me one of the only few I know in the UK. It's Gwen from Gwen Gets to Work. Gwen interviews grown-ups about their jobs and careers and what it's like to be them. Hi Jack, this is Gwen, your friend from Gwen Gets to Work, wishing you a very happy anniversary. You asked me, what do I think future celebrations will be? Well, I recently went to this virtual reality place and all you had to do was put on a virtual headset and here you are in a whole new world. I was thinking, what if that was the future of celebration? What if we just put on a headset and here we are with our family from all across the world? Hope we'll both be doing this in like two years. Bye! Thanks Gwen. Yeah, I mean, who knows where we'll be in two years. <laughs> That VR place sounds so cool. You have to let me know where it is. I'd love to go. Wow, what a marathon of predictions. I've really enjoyed listening to everyone's ideas about the future of birthdays. I think we can say that everyone agrees that we hope to be able to continue to spend time with our loved ones on birthdays and celebrations. And while technology may create more opportunities for different ways of celebrating, you can't beat an old-fashioned get-together with family and friends. Presents and gift giving will hopefully move towards quality, long-lasting ones with less or no plastic and decorations will also be more eco-friendly. I'd like to thank all of my guests taking part in my podcast today. I know it's a bit of an odd thing to say, but I'm going to wish myself a happy birthday for Jack to the future. I'll be taking a break for about a month after this episode, but don't worry, I'll be back with a bang. Season 2 of Jack to the Future will launch at the end of April, which is a mini-series dedicated to STEM, science, technology, math and engineering, my favourite topics, and will be called STEM to the Future. I'll be interviewing several education volunteers from the Institute of Engineering and Technology, IET. I can't wait. It's going to be a good one. Subscribe so you don't miss out. Join me next time for another exciting episode of Jack to the Future.